set your alarms and mark your calendars. Wednesdays at 12 noon, we're going live, and you won't want to miss a single play. Bar Level Sports Show, raising the bar on sports commentary. Be there or miss out on the game-changing excitement. Gather round, don't hesitate, don't delay. For in our presence stands a star with moves to sway from the US she came, now in the UK she reside. Jess, the basketball ace with skills worldwide. On hardwood courts, her magic is known. Now on British soil, her prowess is shown. But not just on court does her talents unfold as a YouTuber, her stories are told. So let's raise a cheer, let's make it clear. For Jess, our guest, both far and near. A player, a YouTuber, an American sensation. Let's give them a welcome with no hesitation. Yeah! You like that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I could see your face. I was like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I need nothing I, to hit. <laughs> I love that intro. <laughs> Excellent. Lovely. All right. So we're going to jump straight into the icebreaker block. Mm -hmm. We've got about 18 questions in here. So the first, first one is full name, court name or nickname, and any socials you like to share with us today. Okay. Um... Well, my full name is Jessica Beeler, but I've rarely ever been called that throughout my life. I've either been called Beeler, or I've been called Jess, or I've been called JB. There's been so many different names. <laughs> and so whenever anybody asks me, oh, what's your name? I'll either introduce myself as Jessica or Jess. So that's what I've been called yes. like my whole life. <laughs> now on social media, I'm going towards Jess Lee. That's my first name, first nickname, and then my middle name as well. I just felt like it flowed better with yes. that. And that's how it is on Instagram. That's how it is on YouTube. It's your girl, Jess Lee. Lovely. Next question is, how old are you? <clears throat> that I love this question. Whenever <laughs> someone asks me, oh, like, how old are you? I always ask them, how old do you think I am? <laughs> I, love, I love to see, like, how they, like, see me. If I seem older, because of maturity or if I look older and I'm like, I hope I don't look older. I've gotten anywhere from like still a teenager. I'm like, bless the Lord. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, bless the Lord. I do not look old, but I am 29 and I turn 30 in a month in 30 days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Big 30. Yeah. All right, 30, all right. 30. Okay. I'm sure everyone watching can tell by your accent, but where are you from? I am from the United States of America, preferably, uh, not preferably, but in <laughs> California. I That is where I am from. Lovely. And the main sport that you play? That we're gonna the, be main, about today? the main sport I play is basketball. Oh, yeah. Basketball. Lovely. All right. So let's get into these icebreaker questions. They are random as hell. So I'm just okay. going to get in, get, get loose. All right. Here we go. So yeah. first one. If you could have any superpower, but it only worked while you were doing something mundane, like brushing your teeth, what power would you choose? I got any superpower. <laughs> you add the mundane into it. I was yeah. thinking you <laughs> the mundane. Um, I would say maybe like speed. If it's like something mundane, if it's something that I don't really care about, just get through it real yeah. quick, get it's it done and over on. with, <laughs> and carry on with the rest Super of speed. my day. All right. Nice, nice. All right, here we go. Which accent on a man does it for you the most? And yes, you can say UK if you want. <laughs> um. Well, preferably because uh, my man is from the UK. I would say a little, a little English accent, but like mixed in with a little African, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, but I also like a uh, Spanish accent. I love Spanish, love the language, and so a little Spanish accent as well. Good. Saying okay, okay. Next one. What is the most bizarre food combination you've ever tried that surprisingly tastes good? Oh my gosh! It was <laughs> a the first one that came to my head. It was an African, Asian like sushi that uh, like West Asia. That fusion, I had it in France, and it was some of the best food I've ever had. I was like African I, um, Asian. I've never even that, heard of that, yeah, that fusion. I've never yeah, even heard that of fusion. That. It just didn't, the concept, I was like, I hope this food is good, Lord. And I got there, and I'm like, I need to go back. Next time I go back to France, I'm getting that. Food. <laughs> That's it. it was so good. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I like that. I like that. All right, next up, we got, if you could swap lives with any fictional character for a day, 
who would it be and why? Hmm. So it lies with any fictional character. I don't know. I know. When I when I even thought of that question, I was like, it could be anything. So could, every time I think fictional, I always think books. But it mm-hmm. could be a movie, TV, yeah. or any anything. It's not a real person. No, <laughs> Hillary Banks, anything. <laughs> yeah, literally. I don't know. I mean, the first person that popped into my head was um have you ever seen Just Right? With Queen Latifah in common, yes. So that was that's literally the first person that popped into my head. For the longest time, I wanted to be a physical therapist and be able to do that uh, avenue because I personally went down it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I saw that movie, I was like, "That's exactly what I want to do." Oh my gosh, that's, so great. <laughs> that's my life. <laughs> yeah, literally. And so um, that would probably be it, just to be able to help an athlete get back to like the top of the level and just be yourself. I That's one of my favorite movies. I love nice. that movie. Nice. Yeah, no, that is a good movie. I like that one too. I, my missus loves that. So randomly she'll be playing that or that one or Brown Sugar. I'll be like, yeah, I, I prefer yeah. that. I prefer Brown Sugar, but they're both good. <laughs> they're both good. They're both good. All right, here we go. What is the weirdest dream you've ever had that you can remember? Oh my goodness. Uh, wow. <laughs> Ironically, I've had very interesting dreams these last couple months. What is the (laughs) weirdest one? Yeah, Yeah, what is the weirdest one? I can't remember. Um, Maybe the most recent one, it was this morning. I had a dream that I was going to the doctors and my family was with me and it was to check up on my knee. Okay. And I went to the doctors and... I don't know who was in the my dream, but they were like, you shouldn't go to the doctors. Just don't go to the doctors. You're fine. I go there. They're like, yeah, you can't do nothing for eight months. I was like, eight months? Damn. Who's not doing anything for eight months? I was like, what in the world? And I was just so distraught. And the person was like, I told you not to go to the doctor. You're fine. And I was like, eight months? Who, who's not going to be playing basketball? Who's not going to be doing stuff for eight months? Not me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do my thing. That was probably one of the weirdest the recent dreams that I can think of that I've had so far. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, here we go. Another thinker. If you could invent a holiday, what would it be called and how would the people celebrate? Um, <laughs> thinker. Invent hard. Just be just day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like uh, no working day. No working. Every, everybody's just off work. Everything's shut down. You know Day before, get what you need to get because nothing's going to be okay. okay Go nothing, out. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, more than nothing. a bank holiday. More. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's working. If you want to get around, if you want to get to things, you either gotta drive or you got to walk. Same. It's just oh, a... Yeah. There'll be no, no celebration. Just do nothing. <laughs> yeah, do, do nothing. Enjoy. Enjoy the day. Get Go out somewhere. Stay at home. Relax. Recuperate. Just a no working day. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right, here's one for you. If you could have any celebrity narrate your life, who would you pick and why? Any celebrity? Who's got that voice? I know who I'd go for Mm. straight away. Who would you go for? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. And now National (laughs) Geographic. Um, I don't... Anybody narrate my life? Hmm. You're famous for that. I don't know. Nobody really, like comes to mind <laughs> would you have a male voice or a female voice you think hmm. maybe maybe uh viola davis i was just i was just yes. thinking that when i when i even asked the question i was like it's got to be viola she got well. that very like powerful especially voice. when she's Shouting, Jesus yeah, <laughs> it's very powerful. Right, Maybe right, Viola right. Davis, even as yes. we're talking, I'm thinking fences, like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> it's not in everything, just yeah. all the all the works. Yeah, she got it, she got it. All right, here we go. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mangoes, mangoes. Oh, I thought he was gonna say the fusion mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> no, no, mangoes. mangoes. If it was like one, like. Like just one thing that I had to have mangoes. I love mangoes. I yeah, said nice. I eat mangoes all the time. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, if you could make one law that everyone had to follow, what would it be? One law that everyone had to follow. Hmm. 
That's interesting because I've thought about this before. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I don't ah, maybe hmm. is it a law that we already have but you know people break laws yeah <laughs> that's this true one they, this one they have to follow yeah they have to follow just a lot simple like, no more I mean, maybe <laughs> you you have to you have to get out and move at least 45 minutes of the day, whatever exercise that looks for you, at least two times a week. Ooh, I Just like get that. out and move, exercise, whether it's a walk, whether it's a run, whether it's going up and down the stairs for 45 minutes. You just have to move for two days out the week. Nice. I like that. Yeah. That's a good one. Yep. Yeah, lovely. Make that look lovely. <laughs> here we go. We got about four more here. Would you yeah. rather speak to animals or speak all foreign languages? Oh, do I want to be Dr. Doolittle or do I want to do this? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, first of all, when it comes to speaking to animals, I speak to them like they're humans, <laughs> like all type of animals. If I see a spider, <laughs> I'm like, look, you're coming into my space. If you just leave gracefully, I won't kill you. But if you disturb me, I might have to kill you. I'm just letting you know. And then just let your, let your peoples know not to come here because no. it's going down. But I think I would want to speak all languages. I think that is something that I... Yeah, that would be crazy, if, isn't it? <laughs> in a perfect world, I would love to be able to speak all languages, travel, and to be able to talk to the people in their language. So I think it's a like a big thing to be able to speak to someone yeah. in their language it's just that like familiar familiarity that they have like oh you can speak my language okay it's like just like a wall yeah and it, it just, everyone just calms down yeah now i've seen yeah. that certain videos i don't know if you've seen it as a guy it's a white guy he goes around to like african countries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in their language and they're like their oh, eyes get they, big. They just they're relax. Just, like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, have this and have that. Get me. Yeah. Where's that gone? Where's the deals for the non-speaking? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I've seen a. There's a couple of videos that I've watched of this one black guy. He, I think he lives in Asia, and he goes around and he knows fluent Mandarin, fluent whatever language it is, and he'll start speaking it, and they'll be like. How are you so good? Like, where'd you learn? Like, you speak like a native. Like, yeah, wow. Really, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I find that amazing. The reaction is crazy. Yeah. It yeah. Definitely is. <laughs> All right, here we go. If you could turn any activity, any activity into an Olympic sport, what would you change to make an Olympic sport? So you could win that medal as well. So something that you're good at that isn't a sport, make it a sport, and then you lift that gold. Mm. I, it's kind of already I don't is it Olympic sport I'm not sure I know speed skating is one but just like rollerblading long distances ah rollerblading yeah I don't know if that is one that might yeah, yeah. I don't know if that is what roll, so long distance yeah as in a, yeah. a race or just long distance um, as far as you can go type thing. as far as you can go Type thing, yeah. Right. So when the pavement runs out. <laughs> yep, literally. Once you hit the water, you have made it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Last two. What is the most ridiculous fact about you? Most ridiculous fact about me. <laughs> um, ridiculous. I think... Uh, I think it's the mango thing. I have an obsession with <laughs> mangoes. Mango <laughs> yeah, that's the first one that popped into my head. Like, if you if you ask anybody that knows me, what's my favorite fruit? My favorite flavor of things are going to say mango. I mango. to go back to the mango topic. I <laughs> love mangoes. Had it the first time in Costa Rica back in two thousand ten. I think it was two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, and it's been with me ever since. Nice, nice. All right. To just put a little spin on that question because I've got another one after it. What is the most ridiculous fact that you know anything? Random mm. fact mm. that people don't know. You'd be like, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I feel like I have some, but my brain is going <laughs> blank. Yeah, no. <laughs> mm. Are you on the spot? <laughs> yeah. Most randomest fact. Hmm. Hmm. I got gotcha. you. You did. You did. I am not sure if I'll have an answer for that one. 
Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, last question in this block is, if you were a man for a day, what would you do? <laughs> if I was a man <laughs> for a day, um, I probably wouldn't do anything crazy, but just being a man for a day in itself is just a completely different thing. But I'd probably sit down with <laughs> women and like just like sane ones, not the <laughs> not the ones that got someone that can like pe- women that can have like a conversation, a knowledgeable, intelligent conversation. Not saying all women don't, but just sitting down with a group of yeah. women like that and just really understanding like a woman completely in everything and really understanding what really happens in a month because a lot goes on in a, a month. lot that goes on for yeah <laughs> all right cool 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 all right now take a little break come back and we're going to talk okay. about you and basketball Girl, you got your man keep it cool nothing has to change oh. just take one Boom, boom. All right. So first one is, what inspired you to start playing basketball? Uh, it was watching my older brother play. My older brother was the first one that started playing basketball. And um, he, he's been playing, still plays to this day. He's been playing for years. And it was in fifth grade when I first started playing. So I was about 10, 11, I think it was. Um, when I first started playing basketball and I was on a peewee, we call it peewee basketball from back home in Michigan, where I was originally from before I moved to California. And uh, I was on a team of all boys, only girl. And, and I tell you, I was raw, not in a good way. It was, I was raw, but it was just, I, I don't know. I just enjoyed it, enjoyed playing it, enjoyed just like hearing like the crowd when you did something well and just being able to play with a group of guys that I play with. So I would say my older brother is the first one that inspired me to play basketball. Nice, nice. A little side question. You ever played one-on-one with him? I have. have I I saw the roll of the eyes. I have have played one-on-one with him. Um, I I think I may have beaten him once, but... Over the years. <laughs> yeah, over the years. I think I have one for like a lot. <laughs> Fair enough. Big up, bro. Big up, bro. Yeah. All right. Next one, number two. <clears throat> Got 20 in here, by the way. All right, okay. here we go. So how do you prepare mentally before a game? Is there something that you do or you just roll? Uh, I try to uh, just stay calm before a game. I try not to overthink it because... I can be an overthinker and I can think a lot about what should I do with, how do I do this? How do I do that? I think over the years, that is something that I've just tried my best to be. And with my degree that I have in sports psychology, there's a lot that goes into your mental when it comes to any sport that you're playing. And so just being calm, going in it and just, just remind myself to have fun. You have the skills, you have the abilities, you have everything you need to do out there on the floor, have fun. And I try to listen to uh, gospel music. I love gospel music. So I try to listen to that to really calm my spirit. And then, yeah, yeah, and I got my little like, oh, gospel music (laughs) gets me pumped up. And I think that would be like the the main thing. And then just realizing like, okay, when you go in, who are you playing against? Do you know them? Do you not know them? And mentally being like, okay, I know this person's skill set, I know what they're good at, I know what they can do. And then I don't know what this person can do. Let me just watch them play a little bit and then like learn them along the way, but not overthinking it, overcomplicating it, just going out there and performing in what I can do and what I know I can do, not trying to outperform or do anything astronomical. Right, right. Yeah, lovely. All right, next up, we've got <clears throat> what's your favorite basketball memory? Hmm. My favorite basketball memory, jeez, one, <laughs> I was going to say one recently, but one that comes to mind, it was, I was in high school and I was on my AU team and we were at a tournament and I think it was the finals or the game before the finals. And my coach, um, he, uh, he's very passionate. He would tell us like it is. And he'd be like, I need you to do this. If you don't do it, you coming out until you do it. <laughs> and so he was just 
it was a very, very intense game. And he was going at it with um, the refs. The refs ended up kicking him out. Dang. So it was just us girls <laughs> on the floor. And they were like, we got to do this for coach. So we went out there and we played hard. And we ended up winning that game. I don't remember if we won the tournament, but we won that game. And it was just like a big like, oh, yeah, we can yeah. do this. <laughs> nice. Excellent. All right. Within the sport, who is your biggest role model? I don't – honestly, I don't know if I have any, like, role models within the sport, um, but I have people that I – I would say admire that have came through the sport. And the one person that I've learned more about over the years, yes, he was a great, great player and everything, and I knew that about him, but the way he studied the game um, was just crazy. Um, Kobe, obviously – he, uh, um, the way he studied players, I would say, is how I just admire him, how he would know, like, okay, I know you can do this, this, and this. I'm going to push you out of your comfort zone to see what you do. And when I see that, okay, I know how to react. And also on the defensive side, Dennis Rodman, the way he played defense, I am that type of person. I'm like, Offense, offense has came over the years. I've always been a defensive player. And so just to see how he didn't really care about scoring, he didn't really care about offense side. But defensively, if you are guarded against him, you're going to have a heck of a game. Yeah, it's on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, those two players that come to mind are some that I admire within the game. Nice, nice. Okay, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of being a basketball player? What is it not challenging? <laughs> no, uh, I would say confidence is probably one of the most challenging aspects because you can have all of the talents and the skills known to man. But if you don't have that confidence in yourself that you can do the task at hand or get by one person, no matter what level they are, no matter what skill set they are, if you don't have the confidence in yourself and your ability, it's going to be hard to be able to progress in basketball, in my eyes. And just a mindset. If your mental is not there and confidence, it's it's hard. It's hard because people will come at you for your mindset and for your confidence and knock you down. And I've experienced it and I've been around players that have experienced that. And it's just so heart crushing that is their confidence is shattered and their mental is shattered to where they don't even want to play the sport anymore. Mm. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I hear that. I hear that. All right. <clears throat> it's a personal one. How do you handle pressure in a, a pressured situation during the game? How do you personally handle it? I step up to it. Practice? Honestly, I step up to it. The first year uh, playing varsity basketball, I was a freshman. I was on the varsity team. There was this six-foot girl. She was bigger than me. I've always been a small post, not even in height, but in, like, size as well. I've always been small, but I've always had, like, that strength, that, like, invisible strength. Right, People uh, always would, like, underestimate me. Like, oh, she's a she's just a little small <laughs> post. She's only 5'10", and she's probably pushing 145. I still had strength. And so whenever <laughs> since the since since I started playing, but even in high school in that first game, my coach, my assistant coach came up to me and he was like, We need you to guard this girl. Uh, can you do it? I looked at her, I looked at her and I said, Yeah, I can do it. In the back of my head, I was like, How am I gonna do it? She's six foot. She's six foot. What am I gonna do? But I Hope stepped up, up to yeah. yeah, I stepped up to it. I had one of the best games my first game ever on varsity in high school i was in the newspaper everything right. so whenever it comes to a challenge even in that in overtime situations or last minute situations i step up to it if it if i need to step up to it if it calls for me to step up to it i'm not going to be like oh i'm going to be the superhero yes. <laughs> if it's not me if i know somebody else can shoot or guard somebody better i'm gonna have them do it but if right, it's right. me that needs to step up to it i'm gonna step up Nice. I like that. Cool. All right. Can you share any pre-game superstitions you have? And if you don't have any, that um ones that you've seen other players have on your team? 
One is you cannot you cannot start the game oh, on a missed go. basket. You have to end warm up on a made basket. That is a <laughs> cardinal rule. I will stick by it. I don't care who shoots the layup, who shoots the shot, whatever. You nobody is walking off that court <laughs> and going to the huddle without a made basket. That's just it. I don't know Nobody. why. I don't know why it doesn't determine the game at all. But it's just like, make the layup, make the shot. Someone's just shooting. Okay, I'm done. You didn't make a shot. You can't leave. Give me the ball. Let me make the layup. Thank you. Yes. I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> lovely, lovely. All right. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned from playing basketball? If there Teamwork. is. Teamwork. I say teamwork, working together in a team. When a team works together, it's a beautiful thing. When there's teamwork, oh, it's just like poetry in motion. And yeah. it's not something that just is on the basketball court. It's something that's off the basketball court that you take to, into any type of situation. Teamwork. The One of the best teams that I personally, that I've seen do teamwork well and just it's just beautiful to watch is the Spurs. Like their teamwork and the way they play is just beautiful. So yeah, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. It sure oh, does. Lovely. All right. How do you stay motivated during tough times or losing streaks? How do you keep yourself pumped? Keep yourself all right. Next game. Next game. Ooh. Have you ever been on a losing streak like that to even yes. know? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you might be like, nah, mate, no, no. <laughs> I've been on a losing streak. For me, I process a lot. I try to make call me insane and call me crazy, but I process with myself a lot and I'll talk out loud things. And so when I was on a team and we had a losing streak, it was just a losing season. I'll be like, okay, like what in the world is going on? There's something that I'm not doing. Should I be doing this more? And I'll really like process everything out loud, out loud go down every single possible situation in my head to try to understand it and personally i'll pray i'll be like lord what's going on jesus yes. help me you go through the dl's big guy yeah, help me. yes <laughs> yes i'm like goodness <laughs> i hear that yeah. i hear that all right here we go there's some passed down knowledge what advice would you give a young aspiring basketball player i would tell them to don't create your identity in basketball enjoy it love it do the best you can if you know you're not putting in the work you got to put in the work be real with yourself like mm. am i at the level that i could be at right now if you think like i should be here here and here and you're not putting in the work baby you're not going to get here here and here <laughs> you're going to be at the place that you're at you have to put in the work but also don't put any pressure on yourself to perform at a level that you're not at. Be realistic with yourself. I'm here. This is my skill set. I know that if I work on where I want to be, I'm going to get there. It is a journey. It is a process. And have fun with it. Have fun with the basketball. Literally, basketball is such a simple sport to play. And once you just work at it, it becomes even more simpler and it becomes even more enjoyable. Have fun and make it simple. Keep it simple. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's great advice. Okay, here we go. What's your favorite basketball drill or exercise to improve skills? What's your go-to? Like, yeah, got to be doing this. Mm -hmm. I would say two ball handling. Oh, that's two, the... Yeah, two ball dribbling. Two ball hey, dribbling. You know what? I always used to think to myself, because I, I did. So I was just thinking, I do it like in the gym sometimes, but that's just for like eye-hand coordination type mm -hmm, moves. Mm -hmm. myself. Is this maybe bas if a basketball um, player was to walk in and be like, what are you doing, man? Just out here, just fighting around. But it's a it's an actual drill, yeah? Yes, it's, it's actual like a, a, a real A real show-off type thing. I see mm -hmm. them people, the two twisting. Yeah. Um, when you oh, that's just, you know, like, how many press-ups can you do type thing? But it's mm -hmm. not. It's a real drill. It's a real drill. It's One like, thing that I noticed when I came out here, when I first started playing for the uni I went to, two ball dribbling, it was something that I, that was the first drill that, the coach threw at us are like, okay, two ball dribbling, half court and back. And I was watching some of the girls and it was like a struggle for them. No disrespect to them. But I was like, this is something that is 
drilled in us yeah, from day like, one when we started this thing. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, we're not going to shoot today. Two ball dribbling. And we need to know how to be able to control the basketball with two basketballs in our hand. Once you control it with two and you can do whatever you want to do with two basketballs, dribbling with one it becomes simpler. So I would say any type of dribbling with um, two basketballs and on a little plus, a little added um, with uh, agility, with like a ladder. So doing two ball dribbling with an agility ladder, it is difficult, but it'll take it to the next level. Excellent answer. I think you've answered this one already. How important is teamwork in basketball and how do you foster a good teamwork within the team? I kind of answered that already, really. Yeah. But yeah. How do you um, how would you like try and input it though? Like it's obvious that teamwork is obviously mm-hmm. a, for a team for team sports, but how do you I don't even know the word I'm looking for, mm-hmm. but implement adapt, it. Put it in, yeah. apply. <laughs> I would say getting outside of basketball and knowing your teammates when your teammates off the floor you don't have to be buddy buddy with them you don't have to be best friends with them but just knowing them how they operate how they do things out outside of the basketball court and getting to know them as a person and it'll translate into the basketball uh game team and just know understanding how this person operates you can know what you need to do on the court in my opinion right. and just getting together as a team on the court as well and knowing them as a player on the floor and it'll help your game improve as well because you'll be able to do what you need to do and you won't expect anything that is outside of their player or their character you'll be able to yeah yeah, or ability exactly so i would say just getting to know your team and really coming together as a team and knowing this is our goal that we have to meet we cannot meet it if we don't hit every single level as a team as a collective yeah nah i hear that definitely okay here we go is a good one what's your opinion on the current state of basketball so both professional and college slash uni level so we got the NBA, WNBA, mm-hmm. and then uni, college. Right. What's the outlook? What do you think? Is it it's all good? It's all roses getting better every year? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I personally, also, I speak on like women's side. I think there is, there's something in the air right now <laughs> in women's basketball. And it's, it's picking up and it's going to, it's going in the trajectory that a lot of people wanted it to go like, through throughout the years i think right now there's just something about the college players that just like left college and that are going into um the WNBA or the pro era i think there's just something about them in the states and here that is just going to be transforming and even women player out here players out here that don't play anymore the passion that they have for basketball to want to expose the younger generation and get them on that trajectory to go wherever it is that they want to go with basketball but to give them that passion that grit i think that's what's been missing in like the timeline of women's basketball is that like that passion for playing the sport and just being no no hold bar and you just go out there and you play from start to finish no matter what and that just like old school just like uh great as <laughs> we have back in the day nice nice all right i think i just reworded this question from another question i've asked you okay. before but i think you had two stories to tell and you only told me one so can you describe a particular memorable game that you played in so you gave me one from back in the day okay. and you said that you had one recently so tell me about the one recently Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it was, uh, I think I was thinking about when I played in a tournament in uh, Eindhoven, the Netherlands. That was uh, a whole nother experience. That's the first time I've played outside of like the UK and the States to be able to go somewhere else and play in another tournament. It just opened my eyes to how there's so many different avenues when it comes to basketball and yeah. how just everybody plays so differently. And I enjoyed playing in that tournament and it was enjoyable to watch the other people because from the States, you see people that are like built athletic 
everything and you see the skill set. You see the more athletic they look, the more better that they are at basketball. The women at the tournament, there was different levels of age, different levels of skill set, but it was just so simple. They did the, the, the base level stuff excellently and it was just like, wow, like <laughs> It's so simple. So I'll say, I'll say that that is something that um, was just great for me when it comes to basketball. Excellent. All right. Again, a reworded question, but I can see if I can give it a bit more detail. So, what is your favorite part of the game? Is it playing it, watching it, doing drills and stuff, talking about it? Like now, like what's the favorite part of basketball? My goodness, I've been, I've literally been in, on every single side of basketball when it comes to like the, I'll say base level, mm -hmm. haven't been like an owner or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not the big wigs, not yet. <laughs> but I've been a ref. I've been a coach. I've been a player. I've been a bench warmer. I've been working the table. So I've seen it from so many different areas and a trainer as well. I think my favorite thing is to see the development of a player. Okay. I think that's something that has well, that, um, the coach's hat on. Then that's been yeah, a part. yeah. So like coaching and training side, because me as a player, I like I like watching my development. My my development over the years has changed. Start off as a post. I'll say I'm a post guard now. I say I'm a little small <laughs> forward. I got a little shot and whatnot. <laughs> and so just to see my development over the years, it's so cool to see a player's development when they put in the work and to be a part of that and to just be able to instill just like knowledge in them or confidence or help them see like you're getting there you're on the trajectory and just to see it it's so it's so cool i have a player short story i have a player back home that i worked with and i worked with her when she was in i think it was sixth seventh grade and then COVID hit and then I worked with her and a few other girls during COVID and now she is a junior sophomore or junior in high school and just to see how she plays I'm like oh my <laughs> gosh I love it to see like where she started um just very very shy and just didn't want to do certain things. I, I would tell her I'd be like go up <laughs> don't be scared they're gonna hit you it's okay if they hit you be confident drive to the basket i can see like she has the skill set it's just like taking that little like seed and planting it in them i enjoy it it's one of my favorite yeah, parts no i hear that definitely excellent all right here's one this might be a bit of a professional question but let's see anyway how do you handle criticism criticism and negative feedback from anyone basically or fans coaches mm -hmm. teammates how, how do you personally handle it is it, is it, I'd say, water off a duck's back? You don't even, uh, uh, I would say now it's kind of like that. When I was younger, I would take stuff to heart and I'd be like, why are they saying this about me? I've had coaches tell me, stay in your lane. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. And I would believe I'd like, man, I guess I'm only good for layups and free throws and rebounds and defense. I can't do anything else because yeah. once I take a shot outside, my parameter, no, I'm <laughs> off the floor. Um, but I would say now it's like I'll hear, I'll hear people. If it if there has some truth into it in it and it's correct, I'll be like, okay, I can do better. If it's not and people just jawing yeah. at the mouth, I'm like, nah, <laughs> go on with it, go on with it. You cool. it, you just a spectator. Have you played the sport? No, cool, shut your mouth. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right, here we go. We've got three more questions in this block. Um, I know you have an injury. So what are your goals for bar for your basketball future? Do you is there something that you want to continue playing or you think, let me step into coaching or let me step into media or anything like that? What's the future with you in basketball? Right now, I want to keep playing. I'm good. I had so with this injury, Lord have mercy, it <laughs> happened um twenty twenty two. It happened July 2022, first injury. First ever, like, traumatic injury that I had. Had to get surgery and everything. And I was like, goodness. Went through therapy and everything, but didn't keep up with my weight training. And so I had another injury this past January. And it's just like I tweaked my knee a little bit to where I had to go 
right back to rehab and everything. And so now it's like, I know what I got to do to keep with it. And I'm going to keep playing because I see how I'm changing as a player. And ironically, these injuries have helped me to be able to sit back and think about what type of player I want to be. What can I do? What can I, what can I not do? Not can't do, but what do I need to work on necessarily? Yeah. And I'm gonna keep playing because, baby, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. You gotta watch I'm it out. Playing. I like that. Um, the injury was the injury in game. Was it in game injury or was it? So the first one. About? <laughs> first one was a scrimmage during the summer. Um, it was. Uh, it, how can I explain? I was guarding this girl. She was bigger than me. I'm always one that's guarding the big girl. I'm always one guarding the big girl. She was taller than me and everything. And so I had like my knee, I had an injury years ago with it, but I didn't need to get surgery. So my knee did this little thingy to where it would go out of place and I would just need to like put it straight and go right back in. I thought, okay, I'm good. But this time it happened and I couldn't, it wasn't going back in place. Yeah. And it, yeah, I heard it and I felt it and I was like, what happened? <laughs> found out, bucket handle tear, had to get surgery and whatnot. And in that, I found out I didn't have ACL and I haven't had it for like two years. And so, yeah. So I was just playing with no ACL. And I was like, cool. <laughs> this past time, it was in a game, last five minutes of the game. Uh. And I was trying to go to the basket, step weird, little cricky crick and i was like okay was it a step was it a step that you had to take i always think about that when i get hurt i'd be like did i have to i didn't have to do that i could have gone over like pick, pick the weight up differently or i could have run i didn't have to go yeah <laughs> I always, I always no. think that. did you have I, to make that play i had i watched the video i didn't have to make it i didn't have to make that play i saw it and i was like chick you got a girl in front of you. You're trying to drive to the basket and a girl right there. And no, you didn't have to make this. You didn't play. have to. Uh, yeah. That's the ones. <laughs> yes, literally, it's the ones. And I was like, you were tired. Just take a seat. Go sit down. You don't have to be on the floor all the time, girl. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, here we go. So how do you continue to evolve and improve your skills as a player? Is it just training? Yeah, it's just training and just training. And being consistent with it. Yes. There you go. That is the word, being consistent with it. Because I have a friend out here, and me and her, I think it was last year, we just started shooting together. She's she's a guard. She does everything when it comes to a guard. She's quick. She can drive. She can shoot. And she got bounced, too. And so (laughs) I'm like, she's like, you want to shoot? And I'm like, girl... (laughs) <laughs> my perimeter, my my area is inside the three point line. You're outside. What do you mean? And so we just started shooting, and she's like, "Okay, we're gonna do threes. I'm like, "It's gonna take me half an hour to an hour to do what you did in like ten, five, ten minutes." So the more and more we started shooting, the more and more we started working on like different like guard drills, pick and rolls, everything. I developed more of my shot, and it's just consistency, training, and pushing yourself. Don't be comfortable with just doing the same drills over and over and over and over and over again. You have to up the level. If you can do around the world in uh, the three-point shot for in five minutes, cool. Now, what is it? Throwing it, running in, back out, getting yourself exhausted to right, be right, able to have right. that next level. So yeah, just consistency and just growing and up in the level of your training. I like that. All right. Last question in the block. What is the most underrated skill or attribute for a successful basketball player, in your opinion? What do most people don't even think about? Is it dribbling? No. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's rebounding. Ah. Rebounding. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. <laughs> it's rebounding. And the reason why I'm so like this ugh, about it is because it's it's so simple. It's the, one of the most simplest things. Rebounding and boxing out. If you do that, you will get boards. You will get buckets. You'll get putbacks. It's just, but people don't do it. And I don't I don't know why. That's one thing I <laughs> shout when I coach. I'm like, rebound. Get in there and rebound. Everybody. I don't <laughs> care if all five of y'all are in there or all four of y'all are in there or one person's back. Rebound. It gives you other opportunities to, like, 
You didn't do it right the first time. You didn't make a bucket the first time. Cool. We got 15 more seconds. We got a reset shot clock and we can get another shot in. We can do it better the next time. But it's just like. <laughs> I can hear the Dennis Rodman defending you. <laughs> yes. It's just like, oh, like rebound it. And then people will be right there and I'm just. The person, the other person will want it more, and you're just like, that could have been you. Could have been you. <laughs> <Could've> been you. <laughs> Lovely. All right, that's the end of that block. We're going to move on to you moving to the UK, but we're still going to keep it ball. There we go. Okay. Okay, so first question. I don't even know if this is a true fact about you, but let's see. What motivated you to transition playing basketball in the US to playing in the UK? Was that a reason that you moved or was it to study? I'm assuming it was, that's why. <laughs> it was It was a part of it. So in the United States, once your university clock starts, you have like five years. You have your four playing years and then you have your um, your red shirt year and then a possible gray shirt year. So you have seven. I don't know if that's still the rules now, okay. but you have... Um, <clears throat> You have a clock. And once that clock run out, you can't play at no university. You can't play at any school. Damn. No JUCOs, no um, NCAA levels. I don't know about the NCCAA or the NAIAs. I don't know if you can still play at those, but I know once your clock runs out, you got to find out where to play because you can't play in a school Same. setting. Okay. See, yeah. so there's a set clock as in make it to the pros or you're out or you're done. Basically, yeah, or you go in, you go into the rec league. Yeah, yeah, you, you go into the, the, the rec league. leagues. Yeah, because mm -hmm. then I, I assume that's why some some I don't know about the girls, but some guys go over, well, come over to Europe mm -hmm. to play. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, because yep. the clock is out. Look at that. Yeah, because the clock is out, and so oh, it man. was, <laughs> it was, um, it was part of it, but it wasn't like the sole reason. I did want to go back to school, and I did want to travel, and I wanted. To, I love traveling. I wanted to see more of the world. So I was like, opportunity opened up to where I got accepted to the uni I was at, and I was like, cool, I can play there. My friend that went there previously, a couple years before me, was like, oh, they're always looking for basketball players. You can go there, join the team. I was like, cool, bet. Nice. And I applied. I got accepted. The uh, is it the day before my birthday or on my birthday in 2021? And I remember looking at the email like, did I just get accepted to this school? It took me a month to uh, um, accept it, and then I had to like do all the process in like two months. It was crazy, but I would say it was part of the reason why I moved to the UK. Cool, 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 lovely. All right, what challenges did you face adjusting to basketball in the UK scene? Like how is it is it crazy different how how we do it here? Um or is it just a, the the dribble the, the, the double dribble? <laughs> no, it, it's the I'll say the IQ level. Okay. IQ level is different because in the States, if your parents want you to play basketball, you play and then when you come out of the womb and you in some type of basketball setting to where you have the base level of basketball when you are young, young. A lot of women that I've encountered playing basketball here, they've started playing in secondary school. They're just like, yeah, you know, I just picked it up and I started playing. I'm like, you're in high school and you started playing. I was playing in primary school. Yeah. And it was just the basketball IQ because in some instance for me, when I would play, I would expect somebody to be in a certain spot and they wouldn't be there. And I'm like, that's not, that's not their thought process when it comes to playing so i would say that's the biggest thing it's just basketball iq it's not horrible but it's just different levels because of how long somebody's been playing or how someone long's been how much they've invested into learning the sport definitely all right this might sound like it's similar here we go can you share any cultural differences that you've noticed between the basketball communities in the us and the uk is that a similar question no no it's different um <coughs> one is the style of play um, from like US to UK or just Europe in general. I feel like in the United States, it's more, it's team, it's team based, but it's like, what can you do to showboat, to break ankles, do this, that, and yeah. third on the person that's guarding you? And then yeah. out here, it's more so if you need to, do it. But if not, 
team, like incorporate a team and just the the speed of play. It's it's not astronomically slower, but it's slower than in the States. I would say I feel like the States is like get up the floor quick, 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 quick. So yeah, those are like the two things. But the community as a whole, hmm. It's here I feel like it's more to together in the UK because of just how the where it's at in um how do I say where it's at in importance of sports yeah. I feel like more people they know where things are so you'll see the same type of people all around when yeah, it's, it's like a smaller basically it's a smaller bubble everyone's every, whoever's involved in in basketball Mm-hmm. We're in this little bubble right here. So, yep, uh, yeah, exactly. No, and you'll that. see, you'll see more of a collective of people that you'll know at different basketball events yeah. in the states, especially in California. You'll see maybe a few people that you'll know. This is my opinion, but it's just so there's so many, there's so much basketball when it comes to just the states that it's like, hmm. what community do you want to yeah. be in? <laughs> Yeah, it's like all little different bubbles over there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, 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 yep. See, see, we just got the okay. Yeah, no, I get mm-hmm. that definitely. All right, here's the next one. Has how has living in the UK influenced your playing style or game approach, or has it not changed you at all? Or are you bringing the change? <laughs> <laughs> I think that just being out here and just what has came with me playing basketball, with like the injuries, playing with different players, and just seeing how. European how the style of play in Europe is just so simple it's simple simplified the game for me mentally to where it doesn't need to be quick 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 so I always try to do things quick and I would lose the ball or lose my balance or not be able to do things correctly and smoothly now it's like change of speed you don't have to go quick all the time slow look and just court awareness has changed and developed for me since being out here and playing interesting interesting so do you think if you was to go back i haven't got this quick question written down but if you was to go back home do you think you'd be you'd be slower everyone would be faster than you you'd have to pick up your speed again or you feel this no you've just got more control of your game it might look slower but you just got more control I think it would be that I've got more control of the game and I don't think it would be any different. It would just be something that they may not have seen or experienced as I'm playing different people. And it's just a different type of game because I'll know how they play in the States. I'll know what I need to do, but I'll know like for my game per se, I'll be able to do the things I need to do. That's just a little. Yeah, you've been able to pick from both worlds there. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Excellent, excellent. All right. Are there any aspects of the British basketball, of British basketball, that you find particularly unique or interesting compared to American basketball? Now, all rules the same? Is there any difference in anything? Bar, you know, being slower. mm, (laughs) One one thing. In the States, we have a technical foul and a, I think, a it's a technical foul, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Ain't that, and, running, ain't that running your mouth to the ref? That's so, why I, I assume that is just what it is. <laughs> it's something that, what's the like proper terminology? It's something <laughs> that is at, outside of like basketball. So if you try to tackle somebody, if you try to injure somebody, that's like a technical foul. Something that puts someone in harm's way. That's probably not the right definition, but right. that's my definition. I'll okay. say that. But out here, you have a technical foul. And you have a an intentional foul. And I was like, the first time I heard that, I was like, what's an intentional foul? <laughs> and they were like, oh, if you uh, if you don't go for the ball or if you... Oh, yeah, purposely yeah, don't go for the ball. Yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, I've never heard that. And just the way the game, the way the game is officiated, like you, people express themselves differently when it comes to basketball. And I've heard people say all all sorts of things when it comes to playing the game basketball but like you can't cuss cuss is a technical foul can't talk to the refs talk to the refs is a technical foul it's just like oh, very i couldn't play i couldn't play <laughs> i couldn't play i know that in football we give the refs hell but oh my mm-hmm. god i'm not saying nothing oh no i no, yeah. can't, can't do that you and can't I think, um, yeah isn't showboating a no-no um some sometimes it all depends on what ref 
okay. Because okay. sometimes I see, it, I, I see it in normally in the NBA, not in like UK stuff. In the NBA, they don't like like ah. Oh. And I think it's in the NFL as well. Showboating, mm-hmm. they don't like it, but if you do it a certain way, you get away with it. Like if you do yeah. it in a better style, but mm-hmm. yeah, they don't like showboating. I'm like, come on, yeah, man, you're so playing it. Why not? <laughs> that part. But that. I would say, I would say just officiating and it's just different. I, that's something I had to adjust to was the way the refs uh, ref the game. And then from a player standpoint and from a coaching standpoint, it's just very different. Would you say it's is it stricter or not as strict or just it's just different? It might be just a little bit more strict. It's like okay. you can't like we're untouchable. You can't do nothing to us. <laughs> yeah. We what we say is word. Yeah. It's like, no, you, guys can be, you guys can be wrong sometimes. You guys can you guys can talk to players and everything and be corrected. But let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. All right, here we go. Number six is what do you enjoy most about playing basketball in the UK? Playing with the different people that I've played with. That's been my like most enjoyable thing about playing basketball in the UK. I've played with so many different women across all different ranges of skill and everything and just to see their passion for the game. Like on uh, this past year before I got injured, I used to play in a Sunday league with, um, it was a women's only, it was with a Muslim corporation of women. And I, just to see their passion for the game, their skill set may not be the highest, they have different ranges of skill set. And just to see how they come there, they love basketball, they love basketball <laughs> and they will play it and they will enjoy it and they will try to bring in anybody and everybody everybody's welcome it's just so great and just to see the different styles of play and be able to just meet different people from all over the world and how they play how they love the game that's been probably my most enjoyable thing about playing basketball in the UK nice excellent excellent do you think there's more of a <clears throat> uh what's the word a diverse diversity of players in America or we have a more diverse here? Hmm. And when I say that, I mean, you know, people from everywhere, not just shades of people or height or skill ability, literally someone from New Zealand, someone from here, someone from, you know, Tokyo. Do you I have think, that? Do you have that? I would say it's more diverse here. Back in America, you may get your people that are from different states. And I would say that's diverse in itself because East Coast play, <laughs> West Coast play, completely different. North play, South play, completely different. You'll be able to tell how someone plays by yeah. where they're from in the States. Out here, I would say worldwide, it is very, very diverse. I've met people from France, from the Netherlands, from the Dominican Republic, from yeah. Spain, from uh, East Asia, West Asia, all over i've met them and it's just their style of play how they play how they love the game it's just it's more diverse out here i would say that see cool 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 lovely all right how do you think your experience playing in playing basketball in the u.s have shaped you as a player in the uk the the different skills that we started when we were younger that were drilled into us like you cannot progress unless you do these skills very very well i think that's something that is different i think just starting out as a young young player like very young Mm -hmm. and having those drills having just the basic the baseline the um what's the word i'm looking for the foundation the foundation of those skills i think that's something that is different from playing here and playing um in the US from like a young age. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Here we go. Have you found any surprising similarities between basketball in the US and the UK, good or bad? Anything hmm. both be doing? Let me think. There's a, I would say there's similarities. I think, I would say, in each area, the U- US and the UK, that they respect the person on the team that is like the best at it. Like if you are the shooter on the team, 
you're the shooter. You you're the designated yeah, shooter. Yeah, yeah. You know what you're going to do, and we're going to respect that you can do that on our team. And I think the love for the game as well, I think it's just a different, it's a different type of love because in the States, we've had it from young. And so it's something that we just grew up with here. It's like they start off whenever they start off and it's something that they want to do and it's something that they love to do and they keep going until they can't go no more or they just try to progress as much as they can. I think that's something that's very similar. Cool. Nice. Next question. Number nine. Um, what advice would you give to another American, another American basketball player who's considering making the same mm -hmm. moves as you? Any advice for them? Don't come. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> or don't I come. Would... No, this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I would tell them be open to just the difference of basketball. Because in the States, you'll, you'll see – the your team how they play how other teams play in your area and your state and the pros that is what you'll see that is like your vision it's like be open and understand that it's different there's so much different basketball in the world and that's something that has opened up my eyes being here is there's different types of way to play basketball and just be really open to the different type of players you come across the style of play and how your game may change or may have to change in order to like fit the environment that you're in, just the skill set. Yeah, no, be I very like adaptable. That. Be adaptable. Like yeah, no, I like that. And you said it a few times now about there's so many different ways to play. My question to that, as I'm thinking, mm -hmm. is but if we're gonna be fair, the US do it the best. In my view, just in my view, basketball, the US do it the best. So wouldn't mm -hmm. it be wouldn't it be Yes, you can play different ways, but when it's time to, you know, get down, down, like I've heard, what's his name? Is it um, Gilbert Arenas? He's He doesn't have it. He goes, nah, man, no one from Europe can can stand up with us. Yeah, a couple here and there. Mm -hmm. you get one, mm -hmm. three guys that come over and can hang. Mm -hmm. But as a whole, like, come on. It's the, same, it's the same if you think it, football or soccer. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. The English do it, or even the Brazilians do it the best type yeah. thing. Yeah. I would come say on. it's... <laughs> I would say that's true, but it's different different aspects. One thing that is different that I've noticed from like players in, we'll say NBA players and European men players yeah. is the physical structure. In the NBA, you got the big, strong, everybody is fit muscularly, muscular wise. In Europe, it's it's a little different from what I've seen. They're healthy, but it's they, the muscular side of it is not so important to be like big and strong. They is more so skill set from my from what I've seen. I would say if a player wanted to go play in the states, I would say get the strength up, get in the gym, <laughs> get strong, and look at the skill sets that are top notch in. Um, in America, because that one-on-one -on -one play, when you can play one-on-one -on -one with somebody, it's a different type of game, I'll I would bet. say. I'll bet, I'll bet. All right, question number 10 is, how do you stay connected with your roots in America, or your roots in American basketball, while embracing the new basketball, your new basketball journey in the UK? <clears throat> like, do you, mm -hmm. that's a good type of question, kind of what <laughs> I was just saying is like, do you now play the UK way, or do you like, Nah, man, you lot got to like, use some of this mm -hmm. California flavor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or do you just wait until you go back home and then you're like, ah, in the face? And <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, it has, a, I've appreciated the game more from being over here and just seeing the different styles of play. I, now I'm like, ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that. And then just knowing how I played in the States, just like very, I'll say very gritty and very like, not hard in a way of where it's like, I'm going to hit somebody, but very, what's the word? Hustle, hustle, hustle player. That's the type of player that I've always been as a hustle player. And just taking that and adding it into like some of the skill set that I've learned out here in British or in England. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Can you describe the level of competition that you've encountered in the UK compared to what you've experienced in the US? 
So you are you tearing them up? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would, in the, the I areas, like a very humble answer, yes. <laughs> no. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> in the in the areas where I know that I am like good, and I like regardless of who it is, what it is, I would say I'm up there, and it's like difficult to either guard me or difficult to be guarded by me. And I would say more so to be guarded by me because defense has something that I've always been um, just me. I love defense, mm -hmm. defense, defense, defense. And so <laughs> if I can block your shot, I'm going to block your shot. You're not getting an easy bucket. I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> and I'm going to make it hard for you as much as possible. And if someone needs help, best believe, I'll say 80% of the time, you're going to see me on help side. So I would say that, but um, I've come across some great players Ballers. out here. And I'm like, I just, I don't know. It's just like, wow. Like <laughs> I study them and I'm like, what is it about you that makes it look so effortlessly? And you're yeah. just so just like top notch, but you're not doing anything that's like mind blowing that I've never seen before. Yeah. It's just natural to you. And I, I love playing with those type of players. And I also am just like, oh, when I have to guard them, it makes me have to like, okay, I gotta, I gotta step my game up. I take this slack off now. I gotta be able to guard you. And it pushes me, it pushes me into like an area where it's like, I have to, I have to do what I gotta do, or it's just gonna be, I'm gonna be that person that's gonna that people are gonna be like, oh, they scored 20 points on you. You can't do nothing. And so it just has pushed me in another direction and I just enjoy playing with all of the different levels that I've played here. Excellent. Nice. All right. Have you noticed any difference in the coaching styles and training methods between the two countries? I know you said the double dribble. Mm -hmm. Is there more than that? Is there any more? The coaching style out here that I've come across is a lot more calmer. I was going to say, I'm too nice. <laughs> it's a lot more calmer out I'm here. Just... Than in the... It's just like, when especially i'll say a few coaches that i've seen when it's like i expect a coach to yell and be like rah, rah, rah. no they're just like they have an intensity in their voice but they don't raise their voice they don't cuss they don't do anything and i'm just like come on get in our face that's what i'm used to coaches yelling at us yeah. and be like you need to do what you gotta do if you don't do it you're gonna be on this bench like what or just like checking us i'm used to that just like I know it's not like they, I know they don't hate me. I know they're yeah. not, they don't dislike me. It's just how they are. And it's just like a, in your face, I'm going to get in your face, tell you what to do. If you don't do it, then you know the consequence. And yeah, you know, you know what needs to, to happen. Be nice. We only got a certain yeah, amount of time to play this game. Yeah. Yeah, get no, it I'll out. <laughs> Reality check, check them and then let them go. If they don't do it, if they don't listen, okay, that's on them. Then yeah. They Practice. can be out. <laughs> yeah. Facts, facts. All right, here we go. What aspects of basketball scene in the UK do you think or feel could be improved or developed further? <clears throat> Anything we need to be catching up on? Or is it just that? Is it the come on, start getting a bit rowdy? <laughs> no, I would say getting the younger generation into it. Basketball, obviously, yeah. is it not the most popular sport in Facts. England. Facts. I would say getting the younger generation more just, like, into just playing it, whether it's doing different drills or different games, just getting them aware yeah. of this. Hey, this is a sport. This is a sport you can play. This is a sport you can get at, and it can take you to places that I know different. There's different – aspect different companies that me personally have been a part of and I've heard about that is getting the younger generation into it. I feel like if it was more and more more money into it as well, um, UK, England, more money invested <laughs> into the yes, more money invested into this sport because there's so many, there's so many people out here that play it, that love it, that enjoy it, that if there was just something back in them that from the young age to the old, it would be a great sport in this country. Definitely, yeah. I think a lot of sports would give that same argument. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, because as you say, you know, like, because, <clears throat> wait, here, football is our sport. What's, you, what's you guys' number one sport? Because I think, like, 
you've got the Super Bowl, you've got the NBA, like mm-hmm. they all promote themselves as being the biggest, but who is, which is the country's sport? I don't know if there's it's, like, it's, it's just I don't, split. It's it just all split. depends. It all depends on where you are at yeah. in the country. Um, in the South. I, I find, sorry, but I find that, mm-hmm. that when they're promoting it, especially mm-hmm. every sport is, <laughs> is the mm-hmm. world's greatest sport. Even like yeah. NASCAR is America's number one sport. Like, no, it's not, man. It's not. <laughs> in, in certain areas of the country, areas it, it is, is. Yeah. <laughs> like in the South, I would say it's not even, they, they love the NFL. But they love their college football. Oh their yeah, college right, yeah. American football. They will go to bat for their college teams, and it just all depends on where you're at in the world, and also the season. If it's NFL season, majority of the people are going to be watching the NFL. If it's basketball season, majority of people are going to be watching the NBA. It's just like whatever oh, okay. season, it's whatever's mm-hmm. on. All oh, right, they're not on it. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking. Yep, yep, they're yep. All, they're all guys that say, "All right, okay." Now, that's during why. the during the we're in spring i would say during like <laughs> from february to because Febu- super bowl happened in february yeah from february to now it's like more nba and the nba starts in september october that time once like the nfl is like already in their season and the nba starts picking up that's when it's like oh people will start transitioning <laughs> And okay. then, yeah, once the playoffs start for NFL, that's when I feel like more people will start watching more NFL. Well, and then once the Super Bowl okay. happens, once yeah, the Super Bowl happens. How big is that bloody country that all these sports have all these eyes on them? It's like, okay, it's take yeah. time, take time. All yep, right. yep, yep. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> all right, we've got two more questions in this block. How do you balance your basketball career and life in the new country? Like, what comes first? Is it you getting used to life or you just focused on like studying and basketball and life can do what life does. When I first got out here, it was just studying and basketball. And then if I had time outside of that, just trying to explore, hanging out with friends, everything. When I first got out here now, it's everything is scheduled. I look at my work schedule. Okay. I know I work here, here, and here. When can I train? When can I train other people? And when can I get to the gym? Everything is scheduled. So everything like flows well, because if for me, if it's not scheduled, I'm like, what, what is going on in the world right now? What is happening? Because life, life going to be life in regardless. Nice. But if I can, if I can schedule out things I know I need to do and need to complete, then life will be life in a little bit less. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. All right. Last question in this block is, have you in, have you had to engage, have you had the opportunity to engage with fans or youth players in the UK? If so, what experience, like, what's the experience you've had talking to fans or talking to the younger players? So I have, I've been a part of some camps since being out here with my coach from the university. And I'm currently a part of a up and coming thing is called Queens of the Court and it's new to the side of Kings of the Court. And it's about like the youth, um, the youth players coming together and they have a big day, June 2nd, if anybody wanna come in Brixton, at Rec, Brixton Rec Center. Brixton Rec Center, June 2nd, there is gonna be a big day. And it's just, I enjoy seeing the different skill sets. Like there's two, there's two young girls that I remember the first year I went to when I was injured, my first injury, I went to the training and I remember seeing their skills. And I was like, there's potential there. They were hard workers and everything. It's just their skill weren't there. And then didn't see them the last summer or the summer before last. And I saw their father at a gaming event or no, what was it? It was an event. A sne- it's called Sneakerness. They're okay. selling sneakers everywhere. Yeah. I saw yeah. their father there and I was able to see like different videos of them playing and just to see how much their skill set has changed in those two years. It's been great. So I enjoy seeing the younger generation, people being exposed to it, being at the bottom of the bottom and the top of the top and seeing just great players. Again, another girl. She was at the camp two years ago. Now she's on GB's um, under-16 team playing nationally. And it's just so 
awesome to be able to see them. And then as I get plugged into different events, different scenarios, whatever you want to call it within basketball community, and it's about the younger generation, I can reach out to them and invite them to it and see if they are welcome to growing their skill set and being just open to bigger and better things. Nice, nice. So are you, do you just go to just watch or are you, you coaching there, you taking part or are you part of the organization? You say you're part of the organization, you're part of it. For the Queens of the Court? Yeah. Yeah, I'm part of the organization. Okay. So I won't be, I won't be coaching in it, but I'm a part of just getting, getting it, it together. Yeah, mm-hmm. getting, getting it right. All yeah. right, lovely, lovely. Okay, we're going to come back and play Would You Rather? Okay. <laughs> And let the rest laugh. Happy to stay fresh, walking ahead. Here we go. Here we go. First one. Would you rather hit the winning shot in a playoff game or make a critical de- defensive stop to steal the victory? Carmen, you already know the answer to that. Already know that. You already know the answer to that. <laughs> defensive. Make yeah, a, block on. Oh, yes. Make a defensive stop. Stop somebody from scoring. Get a backcourt violation. Whatever it is. Defense all the way. Defense all the way. I love that. I love the passion. <laughs> all right. Next one we got is, would you rather have an, exception, an exceptional shooting skill but struggle with defense? Or be a defensive powerhouse and average shooting abilities. Uh, I know this one too. Go on. <laughs> defensive powerhouse and average shooting. If I can, if I know my shots and I know where to take them on the floor and I can make them when I take, yeah, yeah. average shooting. Powerhouse. But defensive powerhouse. Oh, yes. 100%. <laughs> That's not even a question. Lovely, lovely. All right, here we go. Let's see. Would you rather have the ability to dunk over your opponent or consistently make half court shots? Dunk. <laughs> I could, if I could dunk, oh my gosh, I would, I would love it. There was one time I was hanging from a rim and I fell to the ground, Ugh. and just like it wasn't like a bad thing, but I was just hanging and I just jumped down. I was like, that is a long jump. <laughs> it's a long I said, that was a long yeah. fall. Yeah, when you, when you literally let go, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. That, so, yeah, but this- I'm like that. Yeah, I'm like that's high up there. Like, how do people <laughs> dunk full speed, run, fall, and twist and all that? Yeah, yeah it's all right. You gotta like, got respect it. <laughs> literally, I'm like, maybe dunking is not for me, but if I could, I would. I would, I would. All right, next one. Would you rather play for a team with a legendary coach and a history of championships, or oh no, but be sorry, let me read it again. Would you rather would you rather play for a team with a legendary coach and a history of championships, but intense media scrutiny, or for a less successful team with super positive environment and less pressure probably the second one. Oh, i'm shocked there yeah. i thought he's gonna take the pressure there i thought he's gonna go for the pressure championships no, <laughs> no a nice, nice environment and do what you do yeah because i think that with a nice environment you can get to that point where you're winning championships and there's no pressure you guys are building i would say that because it's more enjoyable being under yeah. a lot of pressure no, thank you. I'll <laughs> enjoy my time and make the team what it's supposed to be. And we're going to get to those goals. We're we going to get to get those championships. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number five. Would you rather have a, a career high scoring night in a regular season game or in a playoff game? I'll say a playoff game. A playoff game. Yeah, a playoff game. Because that means, like, you've met <laughs> – You've met it. You're at the playoffs. You need to be up there. It's yeah. not regular season no more. You can't <laughs> you can't do regular season stuff anymore. We want to be playoffs. Yeah, we are there. Playoffs right. level, yep. <laughs> Would you rather have the opportunity to play one-on-one against your basketball idol or have them mentor you for a season? So, I'll say Venice, mentor me. We'll mentor me. <laughs> yeah, mentor me for a season and just to – Pick their brain on things, on how to do different things. Yeah, I'll say mentor me for a season. Say it, okay. Would you rather win MVP award but lose the championship game or win the championship but not receive any individual awards? I say win the championship. Throughout my playing career, I haven't really got awards like that. Growing up, playing in high school, playing in college, I was never one that really got awards. So awards is a couple ago. <laughs> but... But Winning the champ game, take yeah, the yeah, yeah. To be able to know I was a part of like the bigger goal, 
yeah, that matters to me. Nice. Would you rather have an amazing crossover dribble or a deadly accurate three-point shot? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think for me, it would be a deadly accurate three-point three shot. shot. Steph yeah, Curry in that moment. Because there it's, yeah. A deadly <laughs> accurate three-point shot, like Steph, Caitlin, Jeez. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. She <laughs> fired from anywhere. And then there's girls out here that I played against. Every time they shoot, I send up a prayer to the Lord. I'm like, please don't let it go in. Please don't let it go in. And when it goes in, I'm like, I knew that's, it. That's that slow-mo watch. <laughs> yes, literally, literally. I'm like, oh. Yeah, accurate three-point shot. Lovely. All right. Would you rather have a career a career with longevity but never win a championship or with multiple championship but short career? Hmm. Well, I mean, my my career is longevity <laughs> with no championship. So I would say longevity, longevity. with no championships. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, like I want to win championships, but I don't want to have a short career. I don't want to be taken out within five years. I want to be able to play as long as I can. I want to be one of the old cats, like, young kids. <laughs> and being like, oh, you're old. I'm like, this old lady's gonna Yeah, play. this old lady's gonna show you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number 10, halfway. Would you rather have the ability to block any shot or steal any pass? Block any shot. Uh, I was going to say, I've got, got you there. <laughs> no, nah, block any shot block from any the three-point line to the block. Block any shot off the backboard. Uh, three-point <laughs> line. Uh. You, can't, you can't get no shot off with me. I'm blocking it. I'm blocking it. I promise you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Would you rather play in a packed arena with loud fans cheering for you or play in a quiet gym where you can hear every bounce of the ball? Packed arena. Packed arena. I was gonna say, is that is that is that a thing? Is hearing like you know, I can hear hear the squeaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is if that you thing? <laughs> look, I've played in so many different settings when it comes to basketball, loud gyms, quiet gyms, and I had a coach, she wore heels. And if you didn't hear her voice, you heard that shoe, no matter how loud it was, you heard that shoe banging on the ground. So I think that. There's a way to where it may be loud and everything, but you can tune your ears to hear your teammates, hear your coach. You can tune your ears to hear what you need to hear. Need so to I say hear. a loud so arena. Yes, tune it out, but yeah, all right. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Here we go. Would you rather be known as the flashy style of, would you rather be known for your flashy style of play or for your consistent and reliable performance? Consistent and reliable performance. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Would you rather have the ability to teleport anywhere on the court instantly or have the power to control the ball as soon as it leaves your hand? You still oh, <laughs> control the ball as soon as it leaves my hand, without a doubt. There are yeah, times, no higher. <laughs> yeah, there's times where I'll shoot it and it just, it, it feels nasty. And I'm like, no, come back, come back, come back. But I know I can't do that. So any the ability to control it, I'll be like, uh, move to the left, move to the right, in the basket. In the okay. basket. Yep. <laughs> Would you rather have the nickname the Dunk Queen or the Clutch Shooter? The Dunk Queen. The Dunk Queen. I wear that crown proudly. The Dunk Queen. <laughs> Take me any any dunk competition in that thing. <laughs> Would you rather have un unlimited stamina but average skills or exceptional skills but tire easily? Unlimited stamina. Unlimited stamina. Unlimited stamina. Because I think once... Everybody is tired. Skill set goes out the window regardless. That's right. But Dips. <laughs> if, if you have the basics of the skill set and your stamina is there, you can get past anybody because they're going to be huffing and puffing. You'll be like, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Would you rather have a career as a player and later become a successful coach or transition into a career of basketball media after you retired? Hmm. So basically coach or, you know, broadcaster. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I think that's interesting. 
Can I choose both? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I thought you would lean to the coach because you like the thing, but I'm guessing yeah. you're not talking about the sport too. I do, <laughs> and it's something it's something that I recently did with March Madness, and I was like, huh, you don't hear very many people talk about women's basketball like this, and I feel like I'm not I'm not saying I'm like anything like special out there, but I feel like I have a different view of the game, an interesting view of the game per se. But hmm, maybe I don't know. I'm like 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. All right, number 17. Would you rather win Olympic gold medal in basketball or WNBA championship? Olympic gold medal. Olympic gold medal. Is Olympic that because it's country? Medal. Yes. Because you're playing everybody from around the world. I just play people in the States. I'm a world champion. I'm official world champion. I beat France. I beat Spain. I beat, I beat all them lots. I'm the world champion. Yeah, I'll take that one. I beat all them lots. <laughs> Would you rather have the ability to make your teammates better with an exceptional passing, with exceptional passing, or dominate games with your scoring? Ooh, exceptional passing. Okay. Exceptional passing. passing. This last uh, weekend scrimmage, I made a pass that I don't think I've ever made before, but it was between two defenders and I got to the person to the basket and I was like, oh, that's nice. (laughs) Exceptional passing. When someone can pass and get it to the player just perfectly, oh, I love it. Nice, nice. All right, two more left in this block. We got. Would you rather have the opportunity to play against a team of basketball legends from the past, or a team of future basketball superstars? Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting question. You can go both ways. <laughs> okay, now would the basketball legends be in their prime, or would they be like? <laughs> You know what? When I wrote that down, I was like, hmm, because they're here now, isn't it? But um, yeah. some of them still say they can get it in. I'd say now. Mm-hmm. Like now. Mm-hmm. They've got that. Like, Jordan will come, get his fresh Jordans on. <laughs> I don't think they can. I don't think they can move like they used to. <laughs> so I would I would say the younger generation, just to see like where they at and just to see where they go and be like, man, I remember playing against them when they were this and they yeah, and they look, were raw in this area or they had great skills in this area. And I look at them, like, look what they're doing. Yeah, I'll say younger generation, the old heads can stay with it. <laughs> you hear that old heads? That's an invite. <laughs> All <around us. laughs> say, Come oh. on. Come on. <laughs> LeBron versus Jess. <laughs> no, LeBron is still playing. Don't put don't me up against LeBron. I'll end up just being. Uh, yeah, have to get like Magic, get Magic to walk out a little bit. Come on, Magic. Yeah, come on. It. Come on, Charles. Come on, Magic. Come on, knees, Michael. Yeah. Come on, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Shaq. Come on. And it, Shaq, come on. You can do it. Oh, God, Shaq, you know. Crazy. All right, last mm-hmm. question in this block. Would you rather have the chance to break an individual WNBA record or lead your team to an undefeated season? Ooh, undefeated season. Undefeated season. Undefeated of season. course. Yeah. Where else? Where else? All right. We've got one more block. Yeah, one more block to go. All right. This next block is just random funny questions. So let's get it. Okay. Can I- <laughs> Fresh right now. All right. So the first question in this one is, if you were to create your own signature celebration dance after scoring a bus- a basket, what would it look like? Nah, it would have something <laughs> to do with my shoulders. I'm always okay. looking with my shoulders when I dance. So it would be something, <laughs> something with my shoulders. Something with the shoulders. I like yeah. that. <laughs> have you ever accidentally passed the ball to the referee instead of a teammate during a game? No, I have not. No. Have you ever seen that happen? I have. You I've have seen it happen. Or the ref catch it like, or it just hit them. I think it just hit them. <laughs> pass it to someone like a player that's off the floor and a teammate thinks they're on the floor and it's just like they're on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that happen. But me personally, no, I have not done that. <laughs> What's the funniest trash trash talk you've ever heard on the court? Hmm. Anything funniest. that sticks out? If not funny, is there anything like, damn, you just said that? <laughs> uh, it would be like when people are like, oh, you can't guard me. You can't guard me. 
that type of stuff. Same. And then they end up and they end up getting get, get fired. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've seen a lot of people trash talk and then not back it up. And it's just like, but you were just saying yeah, but you, all this you stuff. <laughs> But you really did do nothing. That that'll probably be the funniest for me is when they talk a lot of mess and they the right game there. can't back it up. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> um, if you could play basketball with a cartoon character as your teammate, who would it be and why? A cartoon character. First two that popped to my mind was Lola and Bugs. <laughs> Lola and Bugs <laughs> Bunny. Bugs it's had that them. juice, gave yeah. him all that strength. <laughs> Come on, Bugs. Come on, Lola. We go to play three on three. <laughs> Have you ever attempted a trick shot during a practice that went h- hilariously wrong? Hmm. Ever tried something slick? Ever tried a dunk and it didn't go down well? Yeah. Never had that. <laughs> a trick shot. I think I've tried to do like different things in practice and it just, it don't feel right. It don't look right. And it's just. It's just ugly all around. I'm it's like, like, yeah, I ain't gonna do that. Yeah, I'm like, mm, no, no more. No more for me. <laughs> all right, number six. Can you share a funny nickname you've been given by your teammates? Any funny ones? Oh, goodness. I don't think I'll ever have to talk about this again, but it's literally the first one that popped into my mind. The first college that I played at. It was in uh, Flint, Michigan, Charles Mott Community College. Mm-hmm. And... I smile all the time. I'm always smiling. Still to this day, I'm smiling. And they said, Lord have mercy, I can't believe I'm saying this. They said, I looked like Miley Cyrus and sounded like her too. I favored her and I sounded like her. And so they always called me Smiley Miley. <laughs> Smiley Miley, Smiley Miley. I'm like, I don't look like that girl. I don't sound like her. Don't look like- <laughs> I'm like, why y'all calling her? Yeah, it's just because it rhymed. That was it. Yeah, That's the only reason. Smiley Miley. I'm like, <laughs> Mm. Uh, good. So that didn't travel with you, no? no I made sure of it. I made yeah. sure of it. Once I left that school, I was like, ain't nobody called me Miley Cyrus again. <laughs> and call me Miley, Smiley Miley ever again. Oh, good. All right, here we go. What's the most embarrassing moment you've had while wearing your basketball uniform? Most embarrassing moment. Ever tripped and fallen while running out? Come out mm. with your vest the wrong way, shorts the wrong way, wrong shorts? <laughs> Let me see. I think there was, a, if I'm remembering correctly, there was a time in high school. We have like, we had like tearaway pants and they were like flowy, but tight. And so it was just a lot of stuff with the shorts and the pants, even my top warm up top. There would be times where I would forget to put on my jersey or forget to put on my shorts underneath my warm up uniform. And I would go to get to start playing, I'm like, I ain't even got my <laughs> uniform on. Wait a second, wait a second. And I would just have to obviously go, go get it run, on yeah. and come that. Yeah. So I would say that was probably that probably be the most crazy, embarrassing thing. <laughs> cool. Um, if you were a basketball shoe, what quirky feature would you add to yourself to stand out on the court? Quirky feature. Hmm. Are you allowed to have lights on your shoes in basketball? Is that a thing? I don't see. I don't see no one doing it, so I'm assuming yeah. it might be a rule. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a rule. Against that. Sure I haven't someone seen it. Someone would have by now. Yeah, LA, LA gears. I'm sure someone would have. Hmm. Maybe just like, um, like your your foot speed. It helps you with your foot speed. Okay. So like, like, yeah. So. Yeah, it gives you a little bit more speed. It gives you a little bit more jump. Just anything incorporated with the foot, it just amplifies it. Like a uh, what's uh, what's it, what's it called? What's it called? Like a a real Reebok pump because that thing did nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I begged my dad to get me those, and he actually got it for me. I was like, no, yeah, I'm gonna pump these up. Watch when I get you pump these up. Yeah, <laughs> no, up. Didn't pump Ohio. <laughs> oh, they got us with that boy. Yeah, they got they us did. with that, that Reebok pump. Yeah. Ridiculous. Exactly. <laughs> Have you ever had a teammate accidentally score in their own basket? I I haven't had 
anybody from my knowledge score, but I've had people go the opposite way, even oh, coaching yeah. and playing. I'm like, no, no. Boy, this is what, <laughs> it's like after halftime, like people's brain, like it, yeah. sometimes it doesn't click over. So they'll start going the other way. And they'll be like, no, we're shooting at this basket. And they'll be like, oh, doo, 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 yeah. doo, come the other way. It's open. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, it's wide <laughs> open. Ain't nobody guarding me. I'm like, because we're at the other end. That's why ain't nobody guarding you. <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen. Lovely, lovely. All right, number 10. <clears throat> Here we go. What's the most ridiculous excuse you've ever heard a teammate say after missing a shot? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say, so like, really, you meant to miss the shot. Um, uh, I, I guess the thing that's like popping in my head is out here, they say unlucky whenever you miss a shot. And I'm like, oh, it's I'm a layup. Sure. Yeah. It's a layup. They was right there wide open. <laughs> they could have made it. I missed <laughs> I missed some shots as well. I'm not saying I'm perfect. And I make all my layups, but don't say I'm lucky. No, I could have made that. I just wasn't focused. I wasn't focused. Unlucky, it's a layup. Oh my yeah. god! Yes. Wide open, wide nervous. open layup. Ain't nobody around. Unlucky. No, I could have. I could have made that shot. It's not unlucky. It's my fault. It's my fault. Yeah, you're right. That's what we say. Oh, unlucky. No matter what happens. Oh, unlucky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless yeah, it's not nothing. our team, then it's ah, you shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It's a layup, man. What are you talking about? That's funny. Yeah. That is so funny. All right, here we go. Have you ever had have you ever had an encounter? Oh, sorry, wrong question. If you could swap bodies with an animal for a day, which animal would you choose to help you improve your basketball game? Help me improve my basketball game. Hmm. Um when I wrote yeah. it, I was thinking you're just gonna say giraffe, isn't it? Just tall. But no. maybe something that can jump. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> maybe a cheetah. For okay. Like speed. Speed. Yeah. And be able, be able to feel that like top speed, and be able to like dial it back, bring it up, and be able to incorporate basketball into that. Nice, nice, nice. All right, here we go. Have you ever had? An encounter with a fan or a spectator during a game that left you laughing during a game. Mm. Oh, I know I have with like spectators and it even refs like this past season that I refed or that I coached. The ref was like, "I want to watch you more than the game because I'm very <laughs> animated and I don't I don't know how else not to be." When like players don't do something, I'll like be screaming, jumping around, trying to get them. And then when they make a shot or they miss a layup, and I'm just like, oh, my body, it's like I can't help it. My body just loses all like ability to stand and I just fall to the ground. Or if it's something that I'm just like, I told y'all, you just gotta do it. It's I'm very animated. So the ref was like, I'd rather watch Jeez. you than the than the game. I'm like, you gotta be ref in the game. Focus. Get me, you need your eyes on the pool, bro. Yeah, focus. <laughs> I think he was trying to give you a, a one-liner right there. <laughs> what, you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> all right, here we go. Can you recall a moment when you unintentionally photo-bombed a teammate's interview or picture? <laughs> Random. Hmm. I don't... Do you do I that? I haven't done... No, I haven't Back. done that before. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, if you could have a celebrity join your basketball team for a game... Who would you pick and why? A celebrity. Do they have to play basketball or no? No, but if you don't, you really have to explain why. <laughs> yeah. I said that. Lisa Leslie. Lisa Leslie. Mm-hmm. Lisa no Leslie. To explain why. <laughs> yeah, she's why? great. She's great. Lisa Leslie. Okay. Have you ever had a wardrobe malfunction during a game that made everyone laugh? Mm-mm. Not that no. I can think of, no. No, everything, no really everything. or anything. <laughs> no, everything. Maybe, no. No, nothing. Not that I can think of. All right, there we go. What is your, what's the funniest reaction you've seen from a coach during a game? 
As they all high heels <laughs> over anything. <laughs> Her, it's with that coach. It's so funny because she'll she's played in like top leagues in California. She played for top colleges in the in the WNBA back in the day, and so she's she's very animated as well. But when she hits that foot on the ground, her hands will be going, the hair will be bouncing, everything. <laughs> I would probably say that's the funniest. Because it's like she wants you to like, yeah, <laughs> need you to pay attention. Like she gonna get your attention in any type of way, and she will. Everything's everything is yes, going. everything's <laughs> going. Everything's moving. Lovely. All right. Last three questions. If you could create a mascot for your team, what would it be, and what antics would they get up to during the game? Mm, mascot. Hmm. I feel like a lion or a lioness <laughs> okay. would be a mascot. I don't know. Does any NBA team have a lion as their mascot or any WNBA team? I don't think I don't, so. Yeah. <laughs> but they they get up to anything and everything, acrobatics, during the halftime show, Same. everything. Same. Have you... Sidebar, have you ever seen the documentary of the mascots? No, but I want to. I want to. Where is it on? Is it, um, is it Netflix? Less, no, it was oh. on a streaming service that's in the United States called Hulu. Yeah. I don't know if it's still on there, but... Yeah, yeah. no, I've seen the trailers of it, but mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. I want to know what's going on because like, some of it's, them got beef in it. <laughs> yes, it is a great documentary. <laughs> and the one for the Bucks, I don't know if he still is the mascot for the Bucks. He would do anything and everything and be come from the ceiling bounce on trampoline, dunking. He was incorporated in everything. So that would be that would be the type of mascot I would have for my team. Saying a lion that's just in at every mm-hmm. line. All right, here we go. Last two. Can you share a memorable blooper or outtake moment from team practice or game? That's something that just <laughs> went wrong. There, there was one time where <laughs> we were practicing and my brain, it just wasn't, it wasn't there. And I was on, I can't remember if I was on offense or defense. And in my brain, it just switched. And I was like, wait, what's going on? And they looked at me like, we're playing. And I was like, but I was just on offense. How did I get on defense? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, you know what? Just disregard me. Everything's not connecting. Keep yeah, playing. it's one of them days. Don't worry. Yep. Yep. That would be, that would be the blueprint that pops to mind. Lovely. All right, here we go. Last two. Can you tell me a story of when a ball hit you clean in the face? Did it ever happen? This, oh, oh, I was going to say, this, I was going to no. say, oh, you are lucky. <laughs> the, no, 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 no. There's so many times. It happens so much that when it happens, I'm just like, it's okay. I've had it before. I'll be fine. I can't like pinpoint one. Is It happens so many oh, times. Dang. I thank the Lord. I just, <laughs> am not concussed in the head and I don't have like <laughs> injuries from being just someone shooting, not saying heads up or heads and it just hit me in the head. Someone <laughs> passing it to me and I'm not looking at hits me square in the face. Whatever it is, it's happened. <laughs> See, okay. We just know it's happened. Lovely. Uh-huh. All right. Last question today is, let's say I've never seen a game of, of basketball. What past game should I watch to get hooked and what team should I be watching now, in your opinion? Hmm. What team? So give me an NBA and WNBA for a team. But if you want to just give me one one game, go back and watch to fall in love with basketball. Hmm. I would say watch the playoff season. Ooh, there's mm-hmm. two that pop into my head. Watch the playoff season where the Spurs won the championship and then where the Lakers won. What year was that? It's when Metal World Peace or um, what's his what's his original name? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. But when he hit the winning shot, I would say those two um, – those two like seasons were great and then keep an eye out for south carolina's women team and uh, 
Hmm. I'll say NBA, the WNBA as a whole because the new oh. wave, the new wave of players that are coming in is going to be, is going to be different. I'll say just keep an eye out for the uh, women's basketball WNBA. Lovely, excellent. Yeah. Well, that is the end. Jess, I appreciate you coming through, man. Thank you for having me. Very much. Great as always. Come on now, I know what yes. it is. But yes, people, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Wonder who we can get. Stay blessed. Bye. Take it easy. We out. <laughs> On another electrifying episode of Bar Level, we're reminded that greatness isn't just achieved, it's expected. Because here, as fans and supporters, we set the bar. Sports Showdown, where passion meets precision and the spirit of competition thrives. Join us next time as we raise the stakes and redefine what it means to be at the top. Until then, keep your eyes on the game, your heart in the action, and remember, here at bar level, excellence is the only standard we know.